apostle for true believers in Christ. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and we're reading from verse 21. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, reading from verse 21. The salutation of me, Paul, with my own hand. Look up here. Paul the Apostle, very serious and, you know, corrective in everything from chapter 1. I hear concerning you. There's division among you. I want to let you know that the church is one and you should be united. I hear some of you are saying, Paul, Apollos, and, and this and that. Is Paul crucified for you? The man was hard on them because he wanted them to come together and be united and then he comes to chapter two chapter three you're still babes i couldn't even talk to you as matured people now he laid it on them and now he's about to end the epistle and he said corinthians you know what i greet you my salutation the salutation of me paul with my own hand. You know, sometimes you look at these uh, preachers, pastors, overseers, shepherds, we never see them greet anybody. Ever see, they're thinking about the second coming of the Lord, Paul did. They're thinking about the rapture, Paul did. They're thinking about the many things to correct in the church, Paul did, and they're thinking of many things that still need to be done about their marriage, about the understanding of this, understanding of that. They're thinking of setting the people right in resurrection. Paul did, but he didn't forget to greet the people. Let there be fellowship. Let there be understanding. Let there be interaction. Let them understand that everything we preach, everything we say, is to prepare them for heaven. But in preparing them for heaven, we don't want to make them miserable here on earth. We want to see as much as possible how they interact with us, how they connect with us, how they are happy with us. The salutation of me, Paul, with my own hands let us add that human aspect to our interaction with the people of god and the, the lord help you in jesus name and then in verse 22 it says if any man love not the lord jesus christ let him be anathema maranatha and in verse 23 it says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Verse 24, it says, my love. Ah, Paul, you have love? I thought you know, you're only for doctrine. I thought you're only for, you know, take the hammer, raise it high, and crush everything that should not be there in Corinth. Yes, I'll do that. And yet, you have to do that in love. And he says, my, my love be with you all. All those argumentative people, all those uh, disaffectionate people, all those uh, people who are confrontational, all of you, no exception, my love with you all in Christ Jesus. And the church said, I pray that the love of God will prevail in my heart, in your heart, in our hearts together, in Jesus' name. The affection of Paul for true believers in Christ. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, address and greetings from Paul, the apostle, apostle of Christ. Number two, anathema for gainsayers against Christ. Number three, abundance of grace for all in Christ. Let's look at number one, address and greetings from the apostle of Christ. It says, my salutation, the salutation of me, Paul, with my own hand. Now, who is this Paul? This is the apostle of Christ. Look at chapter one, verse one. In 1 Corinthians chapter one, verse one, Paul 
called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. An apostle not of Corinth, an apostle not of Galatia, an apostle not of Philippi, an apostle not an apostle made by Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and sustenance our brother. In Galatians chapter 1 verse 1, Galatians chapter 1 verse 1, Paul, an apostle not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Look at verse 10. For do I not persuade men of God? Or do I seek to please men? If I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. He knew himself all the time that he was the apostle of Christ, a servant of Christ, a bond slave of Christ, and it was to fulfill only the will of God. See yourself like that anywhere you are. You are a child of God, you are a saint one, a servant of Christ, and you are a member, a sheep of the shepherd Christ, and therefore you comport yourself everywhere you are, everywhere you go, in that understanding that you are a servant of God. We're coming to number two here. Number two, it says in verse 22 of that first Corinthians chapter 16, verse 22, it says, if any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. This point number two, anathema for gainsayers against Christ. What does that mean? Anathema. In the original language, anathema mean, means let him be accursed. Maranatha means the Lord cometh. Join those two words together. Let him be accursed. Our Lord cometh to execute judgment. The judgment denounced. Come back to that verse again. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, any man, understand Paul the Apostle. Paul the Apostle was a man of different capacities, different culture, and different tribe and different environment. Before he came to the Lord, the Pharisees were part of his life, and he was part of their lives. And they hated Christ. They did not love the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that with them, he persecuted the believers. Now he's born again. Now he's reconciled unto God. Now he's a child of God. He loves the Lord Jesus Christ now. But there are still Pharisees, there are still Pharisees and Sadducees who do not love the Lord Jesus Christ. They were his old friends, but nevertheless, he has to declare the truth. If any man here on earth, if any man among the Jews, if any man among my king's men in the flesh do not love the Lord Jesus Christ and they curse him, and they reject him, and they cast as passions on him, whoever they are, even if they were my friends when I was a Pharisee myself, if any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be accursed, anathema, maranatha. When Christ comes, he will judge him. If any man who claims to be in the church will put the apostle, and then, uh, even though it's in the church, because of the hatred he has for Paul, and he feels that Paul the Apostle is suffering for what he did before he became a Christian, and therefore be preaching a kind of gospel, the gospel of envy, and the gospel of uh, animosity, and the gospel of hatred, and he will not declare the word of Christ but justifiably, as Jesus died on the cross, he said, if any man, even in the church, if he does not love the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema, 
is a curse. And when the judgment of God comes, Christ is coming, uh, judgment will come upon him. There were people who were running around and they preached another gospel and they had another spirit and they were not declaring the word of salvation uh, and they were not being faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ who gave his life and who gave everything he had for the salvation of the world. They do not love Christ and they do not affirm the word of Christ. They do not sympathize with Christ on the cross of Calvary who suffered so much and said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? If there's any man like that, a false prophet only pleasing himself and is not pleasing the Lord, is preaching a gospel that doesn't make people to love the Lord with all their heart, all their soul, all their mind. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. The Lord is coming. That's why it said in Galatians chapter 1, reading from verse 8. Galatians chapter 1, reading from verse 8, and he said, Do we, an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which were preached unto you? Let him be a cause anathema in verse 9 it says as we said before so say i now again if any man of whatever persuasion any man of whatever denomination if any man even of our own congregation if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received let him be a cause Anathema. That means the Lord is putting that person under the curse of not loving the Lord. And Maranatha, the Lord is coming. In Jude chapter 1, reading from verse 14. Jude chapter 1, reading here from verse 14. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of this saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints. What's he coming to do? In verse 15, it says to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. They don't love him. They speak against him. Verse 16, it says, These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaking great swelling words, have immense persons in admiration because of advantage. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, it tells us, remember, how the apostles told us that there should be mockers in the last days who should walk after their own ungodly laws. Verse 19, these be they who separate themselves. They won't identify with those who are preaching the whole word of God. They will not identify themselves with those who consecrate and sacrificially serve the Lord in love. They separate themselves, they are sensual, having not the spirit. Judgment comes upon them eventually. But today, we can approach them and convince them and preach to them, earnestly pleading with them to repent and to love the Lord. And the love of God will come to them. The grace of God will come. The Lord will forgive them in Jesus' name. But if they continue not loving the Lord until the very end, then anathema, maranatha, they'll be cursed, and the Lord will come and will bring judgment unto them. Number three now. Number three, abundance of grace for all in Christ. For you, for me, and for all of us in Jesus' name. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. In a time of temptation, 
in a time of trial, in a time of difficulty, at your crossroads, in the time of sickness, in a time of pressure, in a time when you don't know what to do, the Lord will come to you. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ will be with you. When you feel all alone and you are lonely, when you feel helpless and powerless, when it appears things have turned upright, upside down, when it appears that your mountain looks Im immovable, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. When some things happen in your life that arouse something like anger, and it's like, you know, you want to, you are tempted to jump on them and beat them and push them away, and you are tempted to act like you are not, uh, you know, sanctified, the grace of God will come to you. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. When you have a challenge, a mountain to climb, a work to do, a duty to perform, and you don't have the wisdom, you don't have the skill, you don't have the ability, and you don't know what you are going to do. When, you, when it looks like you are coming to the end of your way, and it's like, you know, the devil is saying you will finish that Christian life midway, you will not go to the end. Then the grace of God will show up. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ will be with you. And my love be with you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Grace and love, grace and mercy, grace and compassion, and grace and provision abundant in your life all the days of your life in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let the grace of God overflow all that anxiety, all that problem, all that difficulty. Let the grace of God come and that grace of God is always available. You will be who God has called you to be. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your power. We thank you, Lord, as you're going to show up, even when we are confused, when we are discouraged, when we are weary, we are tired. We don't know what to do. Father, we pray your hands will come down and touch every soul every spirit, every bone, every flesh, oh God, in us, in Jesus' name. Father, we ask for the grace to carry on, the mantle, the battle. Lord God, that to the end, when you show up, oh God, we will rise with you, in Jesus' name. Blessed be your name, O oh God, even for your servant, you have used, O oh Lord, more anointing, more power, more grace, O oh God. And I pray, Lord, you will strengthen him the more in Jesus' name. Lord, as he has planted his word in us, I pray it will not go unnoticed. It will, the word of God will not go, Lord, fruitless. It will bear fruit in our lives, in our church, in Jesus' name. Blessed be your name, O oh God. For in Jesus' name we pray. We thank God for the message of God, the servant of God that has used, that has sent to us today. And I pray, O oh Lord God, it will germinate and it will bear fruit in Jesus' name. Um, at this time, we want to listen to our announcement. The announcement we have, this is a Deeper Life Bible Church in metropolitan area in Washington, D.C., Virginia, and Maryland. And we are using this time to welcome our, our, our first time uh, fellowship uh, partners. If you are fellowshipping with us for the first time today, um, you contact our leaders in our zone and they will give you our details. And by the grace of God, we want to mention our convention that is coming up next month. 
in uh, Kingston, North Carolina. And as, as our pastor has mentioned all the time, it's time to register so that we can get a good deal in our hotel and, and all the things that we need. And I pray that God will provide for you, will provide for me in Jesus' name. The date for the convention is October 17th to 28th. The 17th to 28th of October next month. It's around the corner. And uh, this same Jesus will intervene and will show. And the power he has from the beginning will manifest itself again in that convention in Jesus' name. And we want to mention that uh, this uh, our uh, prayer meeting, this our Bible study, by the grace of God. On Mondays, we we'll gather together uh, for Bible study starting from 6.20 p.m. And uh, we'll have it every Monday. And uh, on Wednesday is uh, our seniors' uh, time. Our seniors from 62 years and up. And I pray our seniors that have started um, uh, with the Lord, the Lord will strengthen them to finish well in Jesus' name, so that we will not finish halfway, but to the end. Bible tells us that who that uh, uh, endure to the end shall be safe, and will, they will carry on the mantle and the battle to the end in Jesus' name. On Thursday, it's time for our children and our youth uh, from 6.20, on Thursday and on a Friday, like uh, on Friday, it's our revival and prayer hour. And I pray that Lord will revive us everywhere, every part of our life that have been weary, that have been weak. That Lord will send His revival unto us in Jesus' name. Uh, let's be reminded that coming Saturday, we have a wedding a holy matrimony that will be coming up in Washington, D.C. We enjoy our brethren to rejoice with them, to rally around them. Uh, start 10 a.m. on Saturday. And if there will be any other announcements on that Saturday, like our, our workers' meeting, our pastor will let us know. So we encourage all of us to come together on Saturday to rejoice with our brother and sister that, that, uh, that will be joined together in Jesus' name. Um, at this time, we want to offer our offering unto the Lord. Our Whatever we have brought to the Lord, the Lord will accept it. So and, uh, now that we cannot give over the uh, Zoom, you can sell it, and our media can give us the number to sell our offering, or you can bring into the church on Monday, or you can send the check to the church, and God will help you in Jesus' name. On Sunday, bring your tithe and offering, and God will bless us mightily in Jesus' name. So let's pray over our offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you one more time because you listen and you answer our prayers, we pray unto you. And I pray, Lord God, the offering that we are given unto you is token from the abundance. Lord, I pray you bless and accept them in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, we ask that as many that have not given their lives unto you, which is the best offering unto you, Lord, I ask you will touch every heart, every soul, every spirit, and we will know that indeed we must be rendering our lives unto you in holy and righteous unto you. Unto you. Thank you, Father Lord, for answering our prayers. For in Jesus' name, we pray. Praise the Lord. Uh, this time we're going to unmount our, our, our Zoom. Let's unmount, and then we'll share the grace together. Let us unmount. And we we'll share the grace together. At the count of three, we we'll share the grace in unison. One, 
two, three. Let us go. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Shall God bless us all the days of our life. We shall spend the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Thank you, sister. Thank you all that have joined us today. And we have come to the end of meeting today. But let's be reminded, Saturday is at the corner for the wedding and the other midweek services that we've announced. And I pray as we create time for God, God will create time for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good night, brethren. Good night, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. yes.